When you give to a local church or charity, how do you expect they'll use your donation? I think it's safe to assume that they'll use your gift to serve their stated mission, right? So if you give to your local food pantry, your dollar is helping feed needy neighbors. If you give to your local animal shelter, you know you're supporting its goals too. The same goes for a gift or offering to your local church. Sandy and I met at Cedar Park Assembly of God when we were just three years old. Today, we currently serve as pastors for this church where we grew up. At Cedar Park, we believe and teach that every human life, whether born or not, is valuable, precious, and worthy of full protection. Our church lives that commitment out in many ways. We partner with a local pro-life pregnancy center and foster care providers. We host an annual camp for children in foster care. We run a K-12 school with over 1,000 students. We host an annual service to pray for couples struggling with infertility. We launched a ministry for infertile couples to adopt frozen embryos left over from in vitro fertilization, giving the gift of life to unborn children who otherwise would have been destroyed. We even operate a state-licensed funeral home on our church campus. Our commitment to valuing each human life at every stage isn't just based on doctrine that's written into our bylaws. It's a core piece of who we are. In fact, a big part of our story has to do with being pro-life because we faced a teen pregnancy. But even then, our church had a built-in culture of welcoming and celebrating every new life. Rather than judging or shaming us, our church helped us become the parents we really weren't ready to be at the time. With all that said, can you imagine what it meant for us when we found out that our home state of Washington was forcing our church to pay for abortions through our health care plans? According to a new state law cooked up in tandem with Planned Parenthood and abortion advocacy group NARAL, any insurance plan that offers maternity care coverage must also pay for elective abortions. Abortion and maternity care are not the same thing. Maternity health insurance is meant to support a mother welcoming a new life into the world, not end that life through abortion. While the sinister, heartbreaking irony of the state's demand sets in on you, I'll also add one more detail. Even though the law includes a lot of exemptions, none adequately protect churches or any other non-medical religious organizations. Between our church, school, funeral home, and other ministries that include a professional counseling program and a university-level ministry program, Cedar Park has over 180 employees who are eligible for health insurance coverage. Each of these employees share in our commitment to protecting life. It's important to us that each of these team members and their families have access to quality health care. But the state of Washington's new law made that impossible to do without violating our deepest convictions about the value of every human life. We were even more shocked to learn of the penalties that lawmakers want to impose on those who protect life. The state could possibly fine churches who don't comply with the mandate and potentially even throw pastors in jail. Can you imagine forcing churches to use tithe money to pay for abortion and then to pay for fines for refusing to participate in the taking of life, or trying to bully pastors into violating their conscience by threatening them with jail? This should never happen in America. It clearly violates our God-given religious freedom protected by the First Amendment. So we reached out to Alliance Defending Freedom and filed a lawsuit challenging the state's unjust demands. No church should be forced to fund abortions. It's amazing we need to say a thing like that but the message still hasn't gotten through to Washington lawmakers or to those in states with similar laws like California. Churches should be free to operate according to their faith without being threatened by the government. And that freedom doesn't just belong to those of us in church leadership, but to every American. To follow our case and to find out more about how you can stand for freedom, visit adflegal.org slash standforfreedom.